Today is the sixth Sunday of Easter Cycle C. The Acts of the Apostles, from which we heard the first reading, emphasizes the guidance of the young church by the Holy Spirit. As the number of Gentiles increased rapidly, there was a difference of opinion between St. Paul and his companions who were converting the Gentiles and former Pharisees who became Christians who believed in strictly observing the Mosaic law. They believed that the Gentiles had to follow Jewish religious laws which included circumcision. St. Paul and his companions did not think that this was necessary. A very heated argument began. The Holy Spirit guided these two very determined groups to gather as a council in Jerusalem headed by Peter and other apostles to decide this issue. How do we resolve our differences? Are we open to sit down with others and discuss differing opinions? Are we willing to invite others in authority to help mediate our dispute? Are we willing to invite the Holy Spirit to guide us? The normal business process in negotiation is for both sides to pretend their interpretation of the facts and they see it regarding the dispute and to determine which are the most just and equitable, equitable positions or with a list of objectives that one party wishes to achieve. In discernment, we identify differences in opinion and take them to the Holy Spirit for guidance. This is done by praying for a while. The longer the lazy process, we need to pray over the matter for a while. There must be an openness to an outcome which we may never have yet conceived one which no one ever thought about. If we believe that any outcome other than the one which we desire will be a disaster, we are not open to the guidance of the Spirit. Good negotiations, even corporate negotiations, also try to understand the feelings, not just the logic of others. We must be open to change our assumptions based on the point of view of the other party, and this requires attentive listening. Decision of the Council which was attributed to the Holy Spirit was that circumcision was not necessary for the Gentiles, but they were to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meat of strangled animals, and unlawful marriages. I divorced people married without. When the book of 
Revelation was written, Jerusalem and the temple built by Herod had been completely destroyed. The new Jerusalem, as described in the vision, does not have a temple, but you shall see God face to face. The new Jerusalem, as the church is built with its Jewish heritage and apostolic tradition. The 12 gates represent the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 layers of stone in the walls represent the 12 apostles. Jesus did not come to abolish the Jewish law, but to fulfill it. Before he was crucified, Jesus told his disciples and us that whoever loves him will keep his word. Whoever loves him will keep his commandments. Our love for Jesus is to be measured not only by what we say, but how we act. Are we obedience to the teachings of Jesus, especially caring for the poor and forgiveness of others? What teaching of the church do you ignore because it is difficult or because you disagree with it. The sacredness of the Eucharist, the sacredness of life in the womb, same-sex marriages, cohabitation, premarital sex. If we follow his teachings, his Father, Jesus' Father, our Father in heaven, will love us, and he and his Father will come and dwell within us. A community that follows the teaching of Christ will be a community of love. The love in that community will reveal God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to the world. How much do we love each other as St. Bartholomew? Do we then the names of our brothers and sisters who have sat with us in the same bench or close by us for many, many years? Do we only gossip and complain, but do not encourage unity and promote community? Jesus gave his disciples peace that they might remain calm and strong in their faith in the face of what was about to happen to him on the cross. Jesus also promised his disciples the gift of the Holy Spirit who we have received. The Holy Spirit will teach us and remind us of all that Jesus told us. Why? Jesus knows that we shall face challenges ahead and we shall need help. Do you remember the steps you have to take to accept this help? Simple, simple. Constant prayer and an open heart. Constant prayer and an open heart. Praying to God for guidance is different from telling God what he ought to do. Let us be humble and obedient.